Back in 2014, Mitsubishi created a truly remarkable and unique car. A large SUV with plenty of space, practicality and an advanced four-wheel drive system based on their years of off-road and rallying experience. Mitsubishi undoubtedly made great cars, but what made this car really special was the method of propulsion. The car was the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, or Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicle, and it was the world's first large four-wheel drive SUV with advanced plug-in hybrid technology. Using a combination of both electric power and petrol power meant that it could achieve reduced emissions and fuel efficiency that were just impossible for your traditional petrol or diesel engine. Truly a no compromise solution for drivers that need the practicality and convenience of an SUV, but without the environmental impact and fuel and tax costs that are usually associated with them. Fast forward to the here and now, and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV is the most successful plug-in hybrid SUV ever. And not just here in the UK, but worldwide. And with every passing year, Mitsubishi are updating and refining that technology, which means the one that I'm driving here today is better than ever. The technology may be advanced, but the reason why the Outlander PHEV is so successful is that it just doesn't get in the way of your driving. You can drive like any other car and let the clever technology do all the work for you. Or if you want, you can take control and let the more advanced features ensure that you get the best possible performance. Now, I've got a little confession to make. I myself am the proud owner of an Outlander PHEV. So I thought it'd be rather cool if I give you a little overview of some of the best features and how to operate your PHEV if you're thinking of buying one or you've already got one. It will be in plain, simple English and you'll love yours as much as I love mine. Hybrid vehicles come in many different forms, but lots of them use a compromise system. They use their traditional combustion engines to charge the onboard batteries. Everyday driving uses your traditional engine, with the electric motor only kicking in if extra assistance is required. With electric only speeds of about 15 miles per hour and a range of only a couple of miles, this means that your capabilities are truly limited, especially with bigger vehicles. The Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, on the other hand, was always designed first and foremost as an electric vehicle. Only using the engine when the main battery is depleted or if you need extra power to get up a longer hill or faster acceleration. This means it's got a much larger battery which uses more power from mains electricity, which is so much more efficient. And more crucially, it's a much cheaper solution than using petrol to charge a battery. With a typical electric-only range of 28 miles, the Outlander PHEV becomes a real money-saving proposition for the majority of us that commute less than 21 miles per day. It costs just over one pound to charge the battery, which is roughly two thirds the cost of petrol for the same journey. Now here we have our two charge ports. The one on the right is a rapid charge port, which can be used in so many places these days, including most motorway services. It will charge the battery to 80% of its maximum capacity in only 25 minutes. The one on the left uses a dedicated domestic socket and can charge in about five hours using the cable that you'll find in the boot. But most clever PHEV owners get a wall-mounted charge socket installed at home, which cuts your charging time down to about three and a half hours. And what's even better is that it starts automatically as soon as you plug in and cuts off as soon as the battery's full. And you can get a free app so you can charge and check remotely. Okay, so we're in the car and the car is on and also ready to go. The green ready light has flashed up because if you listen, you'll know that it's completely quiet. Other than that though, everything's pretty normal. It's comfortable, it looks like a normal car. The only way I'd know that I'm in a car 
is a little bit special, is by looking at the dashboard. So first up, we have got our battery level on the left there, and then on the right, we've got the level of petrol. Then above that, you've got your ranges, so your EV range, and then also your combined petrol and electric range. And then you've also got a rev counter, which is a bit different as well. On the left, you can see your EV usage, and that will show you how much energy you're using from the battery or how much energy you're putting back in when you brake. That's called regenerative braking, and we'll come on to that in a bit. And then the other side of the rev counter is like your usual rev counter, and that shows you how your engine is working. Like any other automatic, you could simply drive the Outlander PHEV by selecting drive with this rather nifty selector lever. Release the electric handbrake and you are away. Easy. But before you do that, have a think about your journey. OK, so let's imagine we're off on a long journey and we're going to go on the motorway. Now, it's much more efficient to use the engine for motorway driving. So I'm going to press the battery save button. And that means that I can save my battery usage for when I'm on slower roads or off the motorway. Or maybe your journey is just in town and is less than 28 miles, which means you're better off pressing the EV priority button and your car will drive electric only, and so you're saving all your petrol. In fact, some people manage to go for months without putting any petrol in the tank. Of course, the car will always use the most efficient combination it can without your input, but it can't quite read your mind about the type of journey you're going to take, at least not yet. EV priority is perfect for journeys like this. If you're just doing the school run or driving to work, it's really, really cost efficient. You pay nothing on petrol. Plus, as you can tell, it's so quiet. It makes your drive much, much more relaxing and stress-free. Ideal, especially in towns and cities. And when the petrol engine does kick in, it's so seamless, you'll hardly notice at all. Earlier on, I mentioned regenerative braking, which is rather a mouthful, but essentially means that whenever you slow down or descend a hill, the motors turn into generators and direct the energy you'd have lost back into the main battery. It's a good way to extend your EV range even further for free, and it feels a bit like ordinary engine braking when you shift down gears in a manual car. The car will default to an average level for you, but if you wish, you can take manual control by using these paddles either side of the steering wheel. Simply pulling the right-hand paddle increases the level of braking, and the left-hand one reduces it. You have up to six levels to choose from. It can get like a bit like a game to see if you can shift up and down at the right times and extend your battery range for as much as possible. There's even an eco button here, which reduces the power output to the motors and climate control system. It's a bit like reducing the engine size down a notch. A lot of drivers get in the habit of pressing this when they start the car, especially around town where reduced power is barely noticeable. It helps save your battery power. Now, if you're really into all the stats and all the info, you're in luck because on your central screen in the car, you can look up all sorts of different statistics. For instance, at the moment, I've got mine on energy flow, and that's showing me all the energy that's coming out of the battery and going into the car, and then vice versa, when I break the energy that's going back into my battery. And overall, you get a leaf rating, which will tell you how green your driving performance has been. And it can get pretty addictive, especially to make sure that you drive as green as possible. Of course, with all this technology, it's easy to forget that the Outlander PHEV is a proper SUV. In the winter, you get the comfort of a twin-motor four-wheel drive system with a snow mode to get you out of slippery situations. It also has a four-wheel drive lock for when things get really tough. Plus, did I forget to mention sport mode? You can press a button here in the central column, and then once you're in sport mode, you've got that extra oomph. And seeing as this is a proper SUV, I should point out that it can tow as well, which is going to be pretty important as we sift away from use of diesel vehicles. So if you're towing really heavy loads, you can put this into battery charge mode, which means that your battery will constantly be topped up from your petrol engine. 
I hope this little introduction has been useful and has given you a little bit of insight as to why this car is so special. And before you worry too much about all this technology, the Outlander PHEV was recently rated the most reliable large SUV in the UK. So how's that for peace of mind? Drive your ambition, Mitsubishi Motors.